my name is Karina Blandon this is my blog thank you for visiting and this is gonna be my very first video blog that I'm gonna make and it is going to be about the previous blog that I did um, I believe it was called a and C the assholes who did me wrong so I mean I'm not gonna repeat that story because that was like just a terrible experience and I don't need to keep keep on going with that in fact, I am going to tell a different story about A and C again, <laughs> except all of that which happened in A and C was, um, I think it was like around 2013, 2014 or whatnot, and now obviously we're in 2016 and things I thought changed, but obviously things are not going to change and people aren't going to change like you, as much as you want to think that people are going to change they don't once you become a cheater you'll always be a cheater I feel so bad for people like that because it's so sad anyways A because I'm not going to use their names again um, and I started talking about January of this year, which was around his birthday. Maybe that's the reason why he even decided to conversate with me. Um, he and I could, kept talking and, and stuff, and then he, we finally saw each other, and it was pretty nice to see each other. And um, It was interesting because we kind of hit it off for a while, and, you know, I, th I always thought that me and him had a thing because it was just always like a, a connection between both of us or something I don't know anyways um, he and I had sex and things were kind of awkward I don't know it was just really awkward um, I don't I don't I don't really recall if I made my blog about when I was raped but I was raped January 2015 by someone very close to me and I never really talked about it and I never really told anyone about it in fact but ever since then I lost the feeling of sex the pleasure it it no longer feels like something that I enjoy or something that I just always want to do it I mean before this even happened I was in love with sex because sex is just such a pleasurable feeling and it's not about love sex is not about love sex is just for the pleasure is what I think but I thought I thought maybe if I loved someone then I would feel the feeling of sex again I was wrong. I'm always wrong. Um, it actually, oops, sorry, my voice cracked. But it actually, it was an awkward experience because I was just laying there. No feeling. It was like I was a sex doll. It's not his fault, it really isn't. I didn't tell him, but how could I? Someone someone like that someone who is who's not willing to stand up for what is right when someone is being bullied and people are passing around naked photos of them and when you know that she did not do wrong someone like that but I was like a sex doll I was just laying there staring him go in and out of me and me not feeling a thing and him enjoying it like it was like it was the most amazing thing that's ever happened to him then he started asking me well are you enjoying it I said I'm not I'm really not so we stopped that was actually not the reason why we stopped we stopped because He 
was bleeding and I'm pretty sure it was because of me I mean I can't go around blaming myself for everything but I'm pretty sure it was because of me um I don't even know if it was actually him bleeding or it could have been even me you know I don't know but he was bleeding so we stopped having sex obviously and um yeah but that was that and we actually ended up having sex again that same day later on but it was it was not fun not fun at all for me I don't know it just it really sucks that I can't I can no longer feel anyone inside me I can't I can't even feel when you hit me if someone hits me I won't feel it I lost feeling all throughout my body I I had sex with this guy I'm not gonna mention who it is and it was pretty hardcore you know weird stuff like choking and slapping and he just kept slapping me like if he was mad at me but you know I guess that's part of it but I didn't even it didn't even hurt it didn't even like I didn't even feel it it's like I even tested it with I tested it with a knife and I cut myself and it just didn't even there was no pain there was no nothing it was just like it's like I'm not even human anymore it's terrifying it's such a distraught feeling anyways um that was then and then he came over this past weekend um let's see today is the 18th I believe um, the 17th, the 16th, the 15th. He came over the 15th because the 15th was my Cadet Corps annual pass and review at Riverside Preparatory, which went good, but it kind of sucks because I had to combine my unit with university prep. So we didn't have enough cadets to be a unit. And yeah, it was just, it was stupid. It was pointless. I had a march like a hundred cadets at once and I've never done that before but you know what it was a good experience and I did I think I did damn well even even though I was scared and nervous the hell but I think I did really good anyways I have a video that I'll also publish on this post or perhaps the next post I'll do it on the next post so that I can actually go into detail about past and review because it's a really good experience and yeah he came over because of that event because I really wanted him to be there and it was going to be my last Cadet Corps event and I I um, wanted him to kiss me in uniform because I guess when it's your last event you have to pull up a, a stunt like whoa why did they do that you know that's against regulations and blah 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 blah, blah. but you know I feel like oh by the way A last time we saw each other before this past weekend he asked me to be his girlfriend and I said yes because I felt something for him and he felt something for me I I think he did <laughs> and it was nice and stuff it felt like we weren't even in a relationship though but because we never really like I don't know do what couples do or whatnot we were just texting it was like things didn't even change when we got into a relationship but it was really lame I didn't tell anyone about it because he told me don't go telling people that we're in a relationship and I said okay why not and he's like because it's none of anyone's business and that's true so I'm like okay I won't <laughs> yeah I didn't so yeah anyways um so I didn't, I ended up not telling anyone, not even my sister, quote, quote, sister, Leslie. She's not really my sister, 
we actually kind of look the same and people always tell us that we're twins so we're now we're going by twins so me and Leslie are twins and she's like the only like, person I can really talk to and like like I don't know like tell tell her things and stuff I mean other than Maya I, I always could tell Maya anything but like I don't know just Leslie's always there for me and it's not only because we share a room no she's not here right now but it's more than that like I don't know and my sister was never there for me she um, never really cared she kind of always hated me and during her wedding um, last November I was kicked out of her wedding and Ever since then, she never really talked to me, and I tried my hardest to, to conversate with her so much. I've reached out so many times, and it's like, I'm not even her sister. And people keep saying, no, she's Leslie's not even your sister, and I'm like, I know she's not blood-related to me, but blood does not make you a family. That is the truth. Blood does not make you a family. A family is the people who are there for you, who care about you, and she did. Did. She did She did care about me, so I thought. So, I considered her as family and my sister, and the only close thing to... I don't know, she's just the closest thing I got. Had. Whatever. She, um... Saturday... No, Friday night, um, we were all in the room, me, A, and Leslie were in the room, and I was laying on my bed with A, and we were cuddling and watching a movie, and, um, yeah, um, it was nice, and we were talking, and, like, Leslie's like, can I come watch the movie with you guys? And I'm like, yeah, sure, why not? You know, I didn't think it was anything. So she laid on the other side of A and, um, and then, like, later into the movie, I was like, hey, A, will you promise me that you'll never have sex with Leslie because she's my sister? And he would not do it. He said it was pointless. There was, there was absolutely no point to make you that promise. And I'm like, you know what? You know what, you're right. It doesn't even matter. And Leslie kind of dismissed it like it was nothing and just laughed it out. And then... And then I made a joke. Why don't you just have sex with her? And, well, I made that joke because she was talking about... Because, like, she just broke up with her boyfriend not long ago. And um, she was with him for a very long time. Not only that, but, like, she's now out trying to seek someone and um yeah she she this guy wasn't giving her attention or whatever and he was just an asshole and he I don't know like it was it was a weird situation and she just wanted to you know like I guess she was trying to figure out a rebound I don't think she realizes it but she was trying to have a rebound after she broke up with her boyfriend or whatnot. So she wanted to hurry up and meet someone, have sex, and get it over with. Um, so I'm like, why don't you just go have sex with her? And they both took it seriously. I was, I was not serious, but they both took it serious. Leslie got up and she stood by the bed and said, are you being serious? And I'm like, if that's what you really want to do, and then he's like, I'm down. And she's like, I'm down too. Let's go. And I'm like, and they were just like suggesting that I go into the restroom and they'll just be here. And I'm like, no, why don't you guys go to the restroom and I'll be here. And they're like, well, you're going <coughs> to, sorry, well, you're going to hear me. And I'm like, fine, I'll just put some headphones in and I won't hear a thing. I'll listen to the super loud music. And so I did. And I just laid back in the very dark and listen to music while watching a movie and yeah um we were in there for almost almost five hours i would say and i stayed up waiting 
like like a stupid little girl waiting waiting for their mom to come home when the mom's out meeting different guys every day i'm just being a stupid little girl waiting for my mother to be there i was just waiting i thought i thought that they wouldn't have done it because she knew how i felt for him and he he asked me to be in a relationship with him and technically we were we were dating and she didn't know she couldn't have known because they didn't tell her but she did know she didn't know how i felt for him so yeah i um they were in there for like five hours or whatever and um after a while i'm just like you know what screw this i don't want to deal with this and i just turned off the lights and i laid down and i still had music in my ears um and then like i finally pretended to fall asleep and put the blanket over my head and they came out and they didn't ask they didn't they didn't even try to talk to me they didn't they didn't even try to see if i was awake or anything and he they fell asleep i mean they he laid on her bed and they cuddled throughout the night and it was like they were in love and i heard them i heard them because obviously i wasn't sleeping and i heard them conversating and things things you can't unhear and then um saturday morning i wake up and around like six in the morning and they're still cuddling next to each other and acting like everything was perfectly fine when i wasn't fine i wasn't okay he i got up to use the restroom and he stared at me he didn't say not one thing i went to the restroom and i i cried I wiped my tears and I got out and I grabbed some clothes and I went to take a shower and when I came back I was just put on, put on, like brushed my hair and put on a ponytail and I left the room. They didn't try to question me. They didn't try to figure out if I was okay. They didn't even care to know, to know anything about me. They were just lying there next to each other. And I wasn't expecting him to crawl back in bed with me after he had sex with her. I wasn't expecting that. But it just really felt bad when I woke up and I was alone. When my boyfriend was on the other bed with my sister, the only person I consider family. It just felt so bad. And then I went downstairs and I I was going to do homework, but I just laid on the couch next to, like, because my mom was sleeping on the couch and I was laying on the other couch and I just did homework. And I just passed out. <coughs> I was so tired because I was, I barely got any sleep because I couldn't even, I took, I took so many sleeping pills because I, I wanted to erase that memory. I thought that if maybe I took so many that I would either A, die, or B, I won't remember a thing. Or, or maybe even that I would just fall asleep and act like it was a nightmare. And I took so many. They didn't even care. They didn't even, they didn't even try to figure it out. They didn't even... They didn't even realize when both of my rings were off, my hands were thrown on the ground, and that I was just so angry. I slept downstairs until 11, 11 in the morning, 11, 11 a.m., and even then they didn't even try to go downstairs to figure out if I was okay or where, where I was or what was going on. And... Then after 11, I went outside 
my mom left she was already gone by the time I woke up and I went outside and I laid on the trampoline and it was like I was invisible people came downstairs people went outside and nobody even realized I was there not only was I a sex doll but I was just invisible I was just there I'm just like a useless person in the world that's just living and not even living just breathing and just taking up space in the world and that's all I really am and and then I just laid on the trampoline for hours and finally around one I came inside and I started like grabbing everything out of the closet and I started throwing it on the ground because I was so angry and I, and still nobody would talk to me not even when I was throwing things on the ground nobody would talk to me it wasn't until after Leslie went into the shower that Angel decided to come downstairs to talk to me oh oh crap crap yep I am making this face because I said his name and yeah so now you know who the mystery guy is and yep so it wasn't until after she went into the shower that he came downstairs to say the first thing out of his mouth was nothing even happened and I said, I don't want to know what did or didn't happen. And he's like, we didn't do it. We didn't have sex, Karina. He looked at me in the eyes and told me I did not have sex with her. And I said, I don't know what to believe anymore. I wasn't there. I can't. I can't you can't prove to me that you guys did not have sex. There's no way I can know. Even if you say you didn't and she says you didn't, then I, I still can't believe you because you probably did. There's no way that you would have been in the restroom for five hours and you did not kiss or, or gave you or did anything, you know? There's just why. And then he's like, he's like, we were just in there talking and everything was just awkward. And I'm like. If you guys were in there just talking, you guys would have come out because you know I was awake, I was listening to music, and I was waiting for you guys. But no, you didn't. You stayed into the restroom for hours. I think you guys even waited until I fell asleep so things weren't awkward. I don't know. I don't know. I while I was laying on the trampoline I was so sad I didn't even have my phone I was just laying there in the hot sun burning my skin getting a sunburn I was just laying there not a single person asked me if I was okay and then three o'clock came around and his mom or grandma or whoever the hell is in his life came in and he left and Leslie walked him out and I just stood there and it wasn't until then that he left that she decided to talk to me and no when she decided to talk to me, she didn't ask me if I was okay or what was wrong. That was not the first thing that came out of her mouth. The first thing that came out of her mouth was that things were awkward and nothing happened. I stayed downstairs and I cleaned the entire house. I even scrubbed the walls even though they weren't dirty. I scrubbed and scrubbed and scrubbed and I wanted everything to just disappear. I wanted to die. I didn't want to be alive. I was over it. I was over having to feel all this pain. And I just, I realized that even 
if I committed suicide, no one would even care. Not then, anyways. It's not until you are dead that people actually care. Until that's not until then when things matter. When they realize, oh, I hope she was okay. Oh, I wonder how she fell. I wonder why she did this. Oh, blah, blah, blah. BS, BS. That's all you'll ever hear when someone dies. But what they don't say is, I'm sorry. People don't say it. Like my best friend when he committed suicide. Those people who bullied him. Those people who pushed him to breaking point of killing himself they were there at his funeral and none not one not one person said they were sorry for what they did not one person and everyone tells me you know what he had a million friends and you were not the only one sometimes I just feel like I was the only one who actually cared way before he committed suicide it's not until people die that you care. And that's the sad truth about life. It was the first time in a year that I had suicide thoughts. I had thought that I'd grown out of it, but I just wanted to die. I didn't want to live anymore. And things have been really rough for me in my life. But a whole year, I didn't think about killing myself. But now I'm just like, why not? Why didn't I? People cause this pain in my life. Why not? It's not like you would care. It's not like anyone would care. I don't think my mission is complete yet. Every night in my sleep, I get visit. I get visits in my head. I hear things. I see things that not anyone else can see. I wake up screaming because I'm so afraid. He's always telling me, just do it, just do it. It will take away the pain. That's all I ever hear in my head. That's all I ever hear. And nobody even cares. Nobody even listens to me. I tell people how I feel, but all they ever say is, I'm sorry. Things will get better. Don't think like that. This is what I hear every day. Just do it. Just do it. The devil wants me. But I don't want him. And now, today, me and Leslie are finally talking and... It's just like, it's like she doesn't even care. She laughs about it. She says, mm-hmm, okay, yeah. I don't think she even apologized for it. And then a Angel, he plays the victim. He plays like it was all my fault. And then both of them lied to me. They both lied to me. It wasn't until after I got off the phone for being on the phone with Angel for an hour we're talking about how I'm sorry that I even I even like blamed you or said that it you you I accused you of having sex with her I'm so sorry I was crying I was crying I was a stupid girl apologizing to the guy who cheated on me with my own sister and no he didn't stop me he didn't try to say why are you apologizing? I did wrong, not you. He didn't try. He just kept playing the victim. He just kept yelling at me and I just kept taking it like he was my husband and he could do whatever the hell he wanted to me. I just kept taking it. And now we're like talking and I'm like, I don't know what to do. I don't. I can never forgive you. And I keep saying you know what, you had sex with my sister and this and this and that and he's like, stop giving me shit for it. 
I'm trying to forgive you and you, you're not making it easy. I'm like, forgive me? You're trying to forgive me? What did I do to you? And he just keeps saying that it's like my fault. I mean, he's not saying those exact words, but I, I, I know. I know damn well what he means when he says, it wasn't your fault. I know. I know it. And you know how hard it is to have to wake up and see Leslie right next to my side? She's always there. She's not going to leave. She And if she did leave, she had nowhere to go. And I can't do that to her because I forgive her. That's all I have to say is that I forgive her. And I forgive Angel. And I, forget, I forgive Jamie. And I forgive Charity. And I forgive Theo. I forgive everyone for everything they ever done to me. I forgive. Because that's who I am. That is what I do. And I forgive. So, I'm Karina Blandon, and that is my story. Thank you very much for watching.